Um, so hi everyone, I'm Pei, and um, today my talk is about my dissertation, which title is The Scalable Multivariate Causality Discovery from Large Scale Global Spatial Temporal Climate Data. Uh, my advisor is Dr. Jian Wan, and I did my research in uh, University of Maryland, Baltimore County. Um, and here is my outline for the talk today. I'll introduce what is causality and I'll talk about the challenges. And I will mainly focus on one part of my dissertation, which is the scalable and hybrid ensemble learning for causality discovery. And I'll conclude and talk about some future works. Um, so what is causality and why we study causality? Um, like causality or causation or cause and effect, um, they all mean the same, that one process or state, which is a cause, contributes to the production of another process or state, which is an effect. That is causality. So the cause is, is partly responsible for the um, effect, and the effect is partly dependent on the cause. And um, there is like, it's different from causality and correlation. One example I really like to use is that in summer, we have higher crime rate and higher ice cream sales. They have, uh, they have a positive correlation, but there's no causality between them because we can we in, um, eliminate crime by shutting down all the ice cream businesses, of course not. That's because there's only correlation and there's no causation. And that's why causality is very important. And the causality study can be applied to many um, research areas like climate science, neuroscience, statistics, economics, psychology, engineering, and so on. And um, my research is mainly uh, combining with climate science, like they're, they can um, use to study the climate variability and climate change, climate dynamics, or climate extreme prediction. Here's an example of the causality study of ENSO. Um, ENSO is called is, um, El Nino and the Southern Oscillation which is the local phenomena of the variation in sea surface temperature and air pressure across the equatorial Eastern Pacific Ocean. Like here's our um, global map around the Pacific area. And that's El Nino uh, phenomena. And here's La Nina. And as we can see, if we have El Nino, the temperature here is increasing and the La Nina will cause the temperature decreasing in this area. That's why we're having like a, um, how to say, a colder winter these years because we're in the La Nina phase. And the Ansel phenomenon can be used, uh, like can, how to say, we can analyze um, causality disco discovery researches and Ansel phenomena also as well as in other um, phenomena and in atmospheric size. And this is an example of uh, we use data-driven causality discovery on ENSO um, to surface air temperature. So we apply Granger causality discovery, which is a method uh, for time series causality discovery. And we study the cause effect relationship from Enzo to the surface air temperature. And we find these are um, the causality from Enzo to temperature. But if we put um, the temperature as cause and Enzo as effect, we can see there's nearly um, no such causation there. And it needs the uh, discovery using other uh, study methods. So it proved that we can use data driven methods to study these kind of um, phenomena and to find their causality between the variables.
But one challenge we are facing is that there are a lot of um, existing methods, like they are all data driven, and they usually output different um, results using same input data sets. For example, we have three sets of different methods here. The first one is convergent cross mapping, and this one is the multivariate Granger causality, and this one is PCMCI. We apply them um, on some like ESO data set, like the inputs are same. And the outputs, like we plot the 20, top 20 strongest edges and we can see they, they have some same similar edges, but overall they're different. And that um, makes it difficult for um, the domain experts, which are the, uh, the experts that are using data-driven methods, which makes it hard for them to really utilize the results because they will, it will be hard to decide which one is better. So the challenges for um, the uncertainty here is that different causality discovery approaches address different results. Um, there is another challenge here is that the data is more and more. Total worldwide climate data volume is projected to increase from 5 PB in 2010 to 350 BB in 2030, just in 20 years. So we um, propose a solution using data partitioning and ensemble techniques. And our uh, work is called a parallel two-phase hybrid causality ensemble framework via Spark um, to make it parallelized and scalable. Um, so one approach to um, address the challenge of we have different results from same inputs is that we can do algorithm ensemble. That is to run algorithms on the whole data set and then do majority voting or other or ensemble um, techniques on the results to output the final causality graph. For example, we can just put in different methods and the whole data set here and run an algorithm ensemble to get one result for the domain expert to use. But when the data size increases, this method runs super, super slow. Or we can do a data ensemble, which is to partition the data and feed each data slice to different algorithms and do an ensemble on results of each data slice. Um, this can address the challenge of very big data size, but still um, like we can have better compute speed, but different algorithms still generate different outputs. Um, that's why we want to um, use a two-phase ensemble in our um, proposed approach. So here are some introductions on the different um, individual methods. Um, so the first one is square energy causality, and uh, I'll, I'll skip it. You just know that we use different data-driven methods. Um, they just are different approaches that take in time series data and output the cause effect relationships graph like this. So we have different three different methods, the Granger causality, PCMCI, and the dynamic vision network, which is DVM here. And we use ensemble learning to combine them together. Ensemble learning um, is a metadata, a meta machine learning algorithm which uses multiple learning methods to obtain better predictive performance than learning from any of the constituent methods. And in our work, we use the voting based ensemble methods, which is majority voting uh, here. Oops. And here's our proposed framework. We have two ensembles and we first partition the data so that each data partition is just one part of the data set. And then we do a phase one ensemble 
the phase one ensemble could be algorithm ensemble or data ensemble. And then we use the results from phase one ensemble to do a phase two ensemble and to get the final result. Here's our data algorithm hybrid ensemble. Here we first partition the data as I just showed, and then we feed these partition data in this way that each partition data here are drawn in within each um, different data-driven methods and get result. This would be phase one. We first do data ensemble, and then we ensemble these phase one results together to get the data algorithm ensemble final result. And that's the other um, approach, which is the algorithm data ensemble. We first do algorithm ensemble. Here, we for each um, data partition, we fit them into different um, algorithms in the first phase. And then use phase one's result to get the phase two ensemble result. Um, and for the time constraint, I will only um, show the results on the real world data set. We also did um, the benchmarking on st uh, synthetic data set. But here's, uh, we apply our approach on a uh, client like Earth problem, which is the polar eye decline, polar ice decline. So as we can see from 1984 to 2016, the polar ice in polar area declines a lot, right? And we want to see the um, cause effect relationships among the atmospheric science variables and the polar ice variable. So we have um, two data sources. The first one, that uh, the first part are the atmos atmospheric science variables, um, like the wind speed, um, the clock color, sea level pressure, such like that. And the data source, the other data source is the sea ice extent. And we did some data pre-processing and finally the input data is six variables uh, with a max lag of two weeks. That means like each variable will like in influence other variables and we only count um, the relationships less than two weeks. Yeah. So we did the consistency evaluation here, um, which is the re we show the result matrix similarity of the real world data set. And we can see that the three different individual um, data driven methods are just, they have very large differences here. And for the single level example, it's a little bit better, but still there are um, differences. But uh, using our two phase ensemble, the consistency um, is perfect because they just output consistent um, results. No matter you use algorithm data sample or data algorithm sample. Also, we did accuracy evaluation. Um, since for the, the real world data set, there's no ground truth to validate our results. We acquire a domain expert and she used um, their domain knowledge to draw this domain knowledge graph for us to use as a ground truth. And here the double or the single arrow means the cause effect rela uh, relationship. And the double arrow indicates there are two ways causality. And we compare the single um, data methods and the one phase and two phase ensembles here. And um, here's the evaluation matrix of, of the, all the methods. We use the structural human distance, precision, um, I recall, and F1. 
And um, as you can see that our methods have uh, a best precision and it has lower like recall in F1 than the PCMCI because the PCMCI methods in our case um, kind of just find every edges that makes it have a higher recall and then why the F recall in F1 is very high in this case. Um, and here's our two phase ensemble here. It has highest precision. Also, we did comparison with the state of the R's methods. We picked two methods, which is uh, the DAC GNN and the TCDF. Uh, the DAC GNN uh, was originally um, developed for the static variables instead of the temporal variables. So we did some tricks to make it um, learn the temporal variables. And the TCDF was originally uh, developed for the time series data set. And we compare the DAGN and static temporal and TCDF methods with our um, two-phase hybrid ensemble and our still have a highest precision in the comparison. And here the red edge means um, the discovered edge in this method is wrong. And here's our uh, scalability evaluation that with more uh, work nodes, our methods run like seven times faster than the baseline methods. And um, for a synthetic, synthetic data set, we have uh, um, better uh, speed up because the partition number there is larger. And here, because we are using real world data set, we have to um, partition the data to make it meaningful for um, Zoom in experts. And um, there's another part of the parallel green boosting based graduate causality learning. I won't explain it here in detail. Um, I'll only talk about like we use Granger causality and gradient boosting. We combine these two methods together to make it a parallel uh, gradient boosting basic Granger causality learning. And it's um, better performed than the, um, the original Granger causality uh, methods. And it has a good scalability. Also, it's a two level parallelization. Uh, so to conclude my presentation today, um, so the causality discovery is a fundamental research topic in many disciplines. And the discovered cause-effect relationships can help explain why a system has certain behavior or state. Um, so we propose a flexible two-phase ensemble causality discovery framework. And there are two approaches for scalable and hybrid ensemble learning to deal with the challenge of uncertainty. And our experiments shows our algorithms outperformance baseline ones in terms of both accuracy and execute time in most cases. And for the future work um, for the scalable and hybrid ensemble causality, we will extend the work to further enable ensemble of time lag and probability of causal edges. And we will better select and merge results from many available individual causality learning algorithms instead of the current ones. Now we only have three algorithms, we want to have more. And we will investigate whether and how other ensemble approaches could help better causality discovery um, instead of um, now we are using majority voting in the current stage. Here's my published papers. And the takeaways today is um, to know the causality and it's different from correlation. And uh, our hybrid and thermal causality learning solves the challenge of uncertainty and we have to help our work. We have to save the world. And thank you.